Right, this is a lecture on C++ and it's for mathematicians and it's for on loops. So there's a few different loops which we'll go through. Right, a loop. This is when you can make the program recur a number of times that you've set previously or can set. And here are three different loops which I'm going to show you. This first one is a for loop. And it's where you you give an initial condition. So we've got i is 0. And we've got an int here to call it an integer because we need to have it in here because it's not outside. If it was outside there, if we'd already defined i as an integer, then you can just put i as 0 or whatever you like. And then we have a semicolon. Then we have a condition here which must be true in order for it to keep recurring. And here is another semicolon. And then we have our little function here which increases or decreases i however way you like so here we've got if i just read this out we've got starting at i is zero if this is true then do this okay here is our if loop if else loop and it's where you have a condition here there's no semicolons or anything it's just if this condition is true then do this, so there'll be some curly brackets underneath here, opening and closing, to say what to do. There's no need for semicolons at the end of any of these. Uh, if that is true, then do this. Else, do this. So this is basically an otherwise. So if it's true, do this. Otherwise, do that. And you, But you don't need the else to be there. It, the if can just be on its own. So it could just be ignored altogether if this condition isn't met and there's no else. The while loop, uh, this keeps running until this is false. So it could keep running forever and it could crash your program if you do it incorrectly. Right. This is an example of the for loop. So we've got our IO stream, the namespace, the main. Here we've got our for. So we've got for integer i starting at 0. It's normally done with an i. I think it's just a standard letter. Uh, as long as i is less than 10, less than or equal to 10, then increase i by 1. So i, I is less than 10, it's 0. So 0 times 2 is going to be 0 here. Then we increase i by 1. So it goes i is 1, and it's less than 10, that's true. So we do this. And if we input it into the program, this is what you get. 0 times 2 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2, and so on. Yeah. The next one is the while loop. So this one keeps running until a function is met. Here I've defined a nu uh, the word number to be an integer equal to 1. So while the number is not equal to 0, which it isn't because it's 1, then it asks you for a number, and the number that you input is the new value for number. So when this value, when you input the value 0, this will no longer be true. It will be false because number will, will be 0 and the program will end. So here I've put input the value 5. It then asks me for another value, I 6. And again, 7. It will keep asking me until I input the value 0, in which case it terminates. The last one is the if-else. And I think this is the most useful, really. So uh, we've got an integer at the number again. It asks us for a number, just like before, and that gives, defines it to the number, the integer number. Now, if the number is less than 10, then we're saying output that the number is less than 10. Otherwise, output that it's greater than 10. And because it's a single line underneath the if and underneath the else, we don't need curly brackets. So... Here we needed curly brackets because we've got two lines here under the while. Go it wrong way. There we go. Now I input the value 6 and it said 6 is less than 10 so it's worked perfectly. You could try it for other values as well. We've got an qu example question here. This is saying calculate the sum from j is 1 to n and i is 1 to n of minus 1 to the power i times 2 plus 3 times i times j, with n, the values up here, input by the user. So what do we need to do this? 
it's always good to write down what you need to do. We need a for loop, because it's going up in ones, so that would be the best way to increment it each time. Starting at j is 1 and going up to n, incrementing by 1. The same for i. We also need, because they're sums, a variable to keep track of how much we've got so far, because otherwise it'll get lost. Whatever we've worked out, it won't be added on. So we need a variable there. And we also need another variable, n, which is going to be the one that uses input. So we'll have a count function and a sin function. And we need cmath because we've got here, we've got minus 1 to the power i. Now we can't do minus 1 with the upward arrow i because that's incorrect, so we need the power function. Here is my solution. So we've got our cmath here, everything's normal here. I've defined an integer called the total sum to be 0 because starting off it will have no value. And I've defined what defined one called max number, which is going to be the uh, user inputs and it's going to be on top of the, both the sums. So it's saying, please give me a number. Here, are, uh, Here's the number that I've input, the max number. Now we've got our for loop. This is going to be the first one, the, the j. And so for j is 1, because that's what we're starting at, as long as it's less than or equal to this maximum number, we can keep doing it. If it goes over, then it's going to be incorrect. And we're adding 1 each time. We've got our curly brackets here. and this next one is inside it, so this is our second summation. So we've got the integer i is 1, and as long as the i is less than the max number, that's fine, so keep going up in 1. Now here we've got the, uh, our total sum variable. So our total sum is going to be the total sum that was previous, plus whatever it works out to be this time, using the i and j's which we get from here and here, so we can use them in there. So what we've done here is we've nested a for loop inside a for loop. And then what I've made it do, just to check that it's working correctly, I've said, now tell us what the total so far is. So we've got the total so far is the total sum here. And then we're closing the curly brackets. Now what I did here is I've input the value of 3, just to check it. And then I did it on paper as well, and it was correct. It went minus 5, and then it added 8, and then it, it took, took 11 off because this was the value 3, so we had j is 1, then i is 1, 2, 3, and so on. There you go, hope that helped.